In the Jotun district of Jibo City lies Wanja village, made up mostly of the bee family who are preparing for the autumn sacrifices. This is the most solemn ancestor worship activity of the year. One of the most important sacrificial items is the lotus root. Four hundred years ago, the bee family made a small pond in the village in which to grow these lotus roots. The village may have changed over time, but the tradition of maintaining a lotus root pond remains. Our ancestors valued what these roots symbolized, rising unsullied from the mud, proud and graceful like our family, pure in mind and body, dignified and imposing like an official. Ancestors of the bee family thought the clean lotus roots grown from mud could serve as a metaphor for a gentleman's character. They were certain that the family would be able to survive for many generations if a person had virtue and passed it on to the next generation. This is why the lotus roots are most important when the bee family worship their ancestors. Wanja village in Shandong province was part of the Jinan prefecture in history. 600 years ago, Wanja was where the Wan family lived. Wan An, the minister of personnel during Emperor Shanzhong's reign, was from Wanja village. When Wan An had committed a crime, his whole family was implicated, and this led to their decline. Bi Chan from Jishi bought Wanja village and moved from Shifu village to settle in Wanja. The B family has been living in Wanja village for over 600 years. In the 10th month of the lunar calendar, B descendants from around the world gather in front of the ancestral graves of Wanja village. This is for ancestor worship. Several items are used traditionally, but one is crucial. After all the family members burn incense, the lotus roots take a leading role. The fourth step will be performed by our representative, Lingda, on behalf of the family as he solemnly brings forward vegetable that represents unity. During this ceremony, lotus roots are placed on a wooden tray and are carried along a path that ensures it is seen by all branches of the family. The chosen representative then places the roots at the center of the sacrificial items. This is to remind them of the bee family tradition. That is, one should embrace untainted moral character like lotus roots do, and pass those qualities on to future generations. A saying in Wanja village goes, be virtuous for future generations. Wang Dayan, a researcher from the Institute for Cultural Industries, has done extensive research on Chinese traditional culture. He shares his own opinion on the popular saying. This morality, established by an early predecessor, will affect each descendant and is inherited through tradition, family rules and ceremony. Each descendant will lead a full life as they cultivate their moral character, strengthen their virtue and remember to do good. This includes passing this down to the next generations. Few families in our history have lasted. One of them is the family of Confucius. Another is Fang Zhongyan's. In modern times, there is Zhang Guofan's family, as well as Liang Qi Chao's. Their families have lasted this long because they've put into practice these essential virtues. Perhaps it is because of their ancestors' influence that people here pay special attention to strengthening virtue today. Wang Yanhua is 62 and moved here 27 years ago. His last name is not B, but his life experience in Wanja village makes him believe that the B family tradition of virtue has been protecting him and his family. Today, influenced by such virtue, whenever village folk call on him for his help, he is not one to decline. Look, this door sill is broken. Can you fix it? I need help repairing it. What's wrong with it? I can't close the door if it's like Let this. us take it out and have a look. I see. You see, see this? It's higher here. Let me get wood, and I'll replace it with a new one. It should not be so complicated, don't worry. Oh, that would be great. 
It may look like a simple process, but to repair a door sill will take a whole morning of sawing and sanding wood. In addition to carpentry, Wang Yanhua also does electrical work, bricklaying, and even cooking. If there are weddings or funerals, he always spends a few days helping. When the neighbors need help, he does not hesitate to lend a helping hand. And he does it without expecting to get anything in return. He's a good man. On top of this, Wang Yanhua has to work in a factory. He does not have much spare time. However, as long as anyone in the village needs his help, he will always be ready to help them. The Bee family in the village has always treated him as part of the family, even though his surname is Wang. In 1987, Wang Yanhua was introduced to Yo Shou Fan. Her previous husband was part of the Bee family, but an illness took his life, leaving her with their seven-year-old Bi Yongli. Two years after she and Wang Yanhua were married, their twin daughters were born. The arrival of children put the family of five in financial distress. As they were busy with work, they barely had time for their children. It was at this difficult time that residents of the village, embracing the virtue their ancestors passed down, took care of Wang Yanhua's family as their own. The people here, they are good-hearted, kind people. They are nice, yes. Uh, no matter whose family needs help, the village folk, they do not hesitate to help. I was most impressed when I had to get surgery and had to stay at Jotsa village for a week. My two children were not even two years old then, and somehow they were taken care of by the whole village. When, when my mother came here, she said some neighbors helped out, and some, some neighbors brought them food, some neighbors brought water for the children, and they were even some neighbors who gladly helped out with the washing and several other household chores. My mother said to me, your neighbors, they took really good care of your house and your family too when you were not home. They did, and I was really touched. Almost every family in the village has cooked for their children. Wang Yanhua feels he survived that difficult time in his life because the villagers took care of him. And so, the Bi family tradition was imperceptibly passed on to Wang Yanhua. He believes one should emulate the Bi family by acting virtuously and passing these traditions on. Inspired by the family, Wang Yanhua also helps his neighbors and has earned the villagers' respect. Today, the immediate family with three surnames has been accepted as part of Wanja. They are part of the village community. Although the strength of the Bee family tradition may be invisible, it has had a profound impact on its descendants. In the genealogy of the Bee family, although instructions are not explicitly listed, you will notice the ancestors' self-restraint and their expectations of their descendants. It is in the preface of every revised genealogy, autobiography, and profile. The family instructions only came into being in recent years. As per our ancestors, we do not lend money for interest. We do not engage in coal mining. We are able to admit when we are at fault, and we love reading. The text includes two aspects. First is the strict observance of the virtues passed on to them by their ancestors. Second is the impact on people, rather, their descendants in the following generations. The character Mo, for instance, literally means plans or schemes. This text serves as the rules or instructions for them. And even through behavior, ancestors set examples, and not just through the abstract, but beyond. There are many factors down to the very last detail, one example of which is how they stress one must not profit, because one must not receive profit, especially between two parties, which is why one should not work as a middleman. Like with coal mining, in their opinion, if you dig up the land, you could be destroying the town's source of water, and that would be a bad omen, and that could cause disputes between individuals, and it would cause tension, perhaps within the family. And the second part emphasizes the importance of passing these lessons on to ensure the family survives and that they continue to grow with these values. It is these values and how they are consistently passed down that define a true family like this one. The family instructions focus on what it means to be a man. Displayed in their ancestral hall, it reminds B descendants 
that one should strengthen virtue in whatever they do and pass it on to generations to come. It is for this reason that the Bee family has thrived over the years. Do not work as a middleman. Do not lend money for interest. Do not engage in coal mining. These words were included in the text by Bee Mu, an ancient ancestor of the Bee family. There is a story about him building a pavilion in his garden. Here, he placed two bottles and two bowls, one bowl for black beans and another for soybeans. When he had a bad thought or did something wrong, he would toss a black bean into one bottle, and if it was something good, a soybean into the other. This was his daily reminder of the importance of strengthening virtue, that you must first be a man with virtue before you can pass your virtue on to later generations. Bi Mu was not only strict with himself, he also took pains to ensure his eight sons would grow into virtuous men. He compiled a book for their deeds, used to record their words and actions. In the preface, he wrote, the ancients say a father should disguise his children's faults. I have no wish to shame them, but they must be vigilant. He was referring to the way people downplay their children's faults or ignore them. But he was not like that. If his children did wrong, he would tell them directly. In the preface, Bimu wrote that his sons could have unsuccessful careers, but as long as they were noble men, he would be a proud father. Under the strict guidance of their father, Bimu's sons all found success, while each of them was also praised by villagers for their noble virtue. The family instructions remain, but how can we be sure their virtue will be passed down? The ancestors understood that inheritance of family virtue requires partaking in ceremonies, the practice of which is important. When descendants participate in these ceremonies, it is then that they practice family virtue. Ceremonies such as this hold much significance for the entire family. It would be powerful to open up to this practice in daily life. In the Bee family, a rule has been passed down for a hundred years. When a child earns as an adult for the first time, he will buy new clothes for his parents to show them gratitude. It also shows he is determined to inherit the virtue of the family. This is called the clothing ceremony. It is early morning. Biu Mu is in his mother's room taking care of her. His son, Bi Wan Hao, will return to perform his own clothing ceremony today. Over 40 years ago, when he started earning, Bi Yumu also used his first salary to buy red gowns for his parents. After many years, the clothes became too tattered to wear. But Bi Yumu's mother will never forget the joy she felt when her son gave her the clothes. Tell us, did it make you happy when he presented you the new clothes that he bought for you? You were happy, weren't you? I was. It made me happy to wear it. It felt nice. I was lucky to have clothes like those at a time like that. You bought the clothes for your parents. What can you say about that? At that time, it was tradition inherited from our ancestors. When you make money for the first time, you have to buy clothes for your parents. And you give that at the ceremony. At the time, I was earning very little. I was only making four jiao a day, if at all. I did not have enough money. But I had to buy clothes to give them for the clothing ceremony, so I borrowed eight yuan. The clothes were made uh, of polyester. Back then, that was the most coveted fabric for clothes. This was because, usually, clothes were made with a much coarser fabric that was quite uncomfortable. But with polyester, it was better. And people would come up to you and they would say to you, your clothes must have been expensive. Biyumu's father was known to be a generous man. Biyumu himself is a loving son. The ceremony requires one to buy clothes for parents. But as descendants inherit the tradition of the clothing ceremony, they also inherit their ancestors' unsullied virtue. 
At noon, Bi Wenhao brings a tailor-made suit for his father to Wanja village. Today, he will help his father put this suit on for the ceremony. Hey, Wenhao's here. Is that you? You made it back. Uh, oh. oh, this looks nice. It is nice. It looks good. I will help you put it on. Look at Wen Hao, such a doting son to his father. <laughs> it fits him well. He deserves it. Looks good on you. <laughs> and it fits him very well. It looks very good on him. The loyalty his grandfather and father practiced are seen today in Bi Wan Hao. Continuing this tradition is the best way for the Bi family to pass the virtue on. After graduating, Bi Wen Ho had the chance to work at a Guangzhou or Haikou hospital. But filial piety was more important. He chose to come back to the village to take care of his elders. Wen Ho, Wen Ho. he graduated after three years of dedicated studies. And he was supposed to stay to work in the south of China because he was a postgraduate student at the university. I kept telling myself that I could easily find another job, but I cannot say the same for my father or my mother. So I made a decision to come home to my parents. So Wen Hao gave up his specialization? Yes, it was organ transplants. His specialization was kidney transplants. Kidney transplants can only be performed in big city hospitals, not hospitals here. That is why I had to start from scratch. Do you regret it? I have no regrets. Mm. And do you? No, I, I do. What I regret is that I did not ask him to stay there in the city. But I am happy because he is here now. Since he is here, I see him often. And that is good for him, and for us too. We appreciate that we are given the chance to see our children. It is important to us to spend time with them. When he has time, Bi Wan Hao comes back to Wanja to help his family and spend quality time with them. For Bi Wan Hao, one's family is like a tall tree. A family should not only accumulate money or land, but remain noble and unsullied. The generosity of his grandfather and his father's filial piety are the virtues that have made this family tree great. In addition to the clothing ceremony, there are many other practices in Wanja village. For example, when eating, there must be one bowl bigger than the others. This bowl is reserved for the eldest in the family. It is in this way that the children learn to respect their elders. These rules influence the behavior of family members and ensure that younger generations adopt the values of their elders and pass them on to future generations. Over the years, both society and the village have changed, but the Bee family traditions remain strong and are still practiced by their descendants. Apart from making rules for their descendants, the bee ancestors recorded stories about exemplary behavior in their genealogy, which serve as both reminders and cautionary tales. It says here, there was a man named Bi Shiji. At the age of four, his grandma gave him some cherries to eat. He always picked the smaller cherries. He ate the smaller cherries and chose them over the bigger ones. This was always what he did. If there were better ones, he would still ignore them in favor of the smaller ones. His grandma noticed. She asked him why, and this is what he said. He said the good cherries, the bigger ones, should be given not to him, but his brothers, to his older brothers. This is a clear display of courtesy and respect and benevolence towards his older brothers. The story of Bi Shiji is taught today as a great example for children to follow. These ancestral stories of virtue 
were meticulously recorded in their genealogy and were passed on through the generations. These stories guide descendants on how they should act for them to become truly virtuous people. In addition to honoring good character, the book highlights a few events that were quite disgraceful. Someone was so hard on people that he died in disgrace. Another chose to ignore the family instructions. He worked in a dark coal mine, quarreled with people, and was eventually killed. These examples are all recorded in the genealogy. These stories of bad behavior remind them of what they should not do. It is relatively rare for them to record bad deeds and the negative consequences of these deeds by family members. But then, these rare anecdotes also work to convey the family message to those of the next generation. And for them, that is to always uphold these family values. These values embody a few essential aspects of behavior, starting with how one must try their hardest to be good people, as well as how one can consistently improve himself through good deeds and improve on shortcomings and learn from their mistakes. And so, it is through these very actions that your moral character is able to achieve the level one aspires to. For the ancestors who compiled this genealogy, keeping a record of bad behavior and their consequences is one way to embrace virtue and pass it on. It is in this way that they are reminded not to repeat the mistakes of their ancestors. Because they have already been warned, it is easier for them to watch their behavior and aspire to be people of moral integrity. Of course, if you want to protect your descendants' virtue, you must first take action to strengthen your own. Bi Ling De has been the village party secretary for 30 years. In 2003, he took inspiration from his ancestor Bi Mu and set up this table. At the start of every year, he starts tossing beans into bottles a soybean if a good thing happened, a black bean if it was bad. And at the end of every year, he takes the beans out and compares. These are the soybeans you've tossed in this year? Yes, yes, yes. If I shake it, it sounds like quite a lot. Let us not count the soybeans. If the villagers need me, I will do everything to help. Even if it is not your job? Why, of course. Even if they are from other villages. Family values. Family values. Admit your mistakes. Admit your mistakes. Beeling De has done good work for Wang Sun. In addition to doing his own job, he helps the elderly who are now alone at home. Their tradition of bean tossing has lasted generations. His father, once the head of a township, also insisted on tossing beans. He was fervent in this practice to reflect on his daily behavior. Beeling De thinks that in order to pass on the family virtue, one must do more than memorize instructions or follow the rules. It is essential to start with oneself. Then you can say you are a man of true virtue. You placed the beans in this jar, right? Yes. And how many are there? There are four black beans. Four beans. And I do think about them every day. I remember why they are here. So you pour the beans out every day? One of these beans is in the bottle because of that time I had a big argument with my brother about how to take care of our parents. We could not agree on anything. When I got back home, I regretted how I acted. I knew I was also at fault. So I took a black bean and put it there to remind me of what I did. In the 10 years Bi Ling De has been tossing beans, he has since found fewer black beans and more soybeans. Soybeans and black beans have become an important part of Lingda's practice, always reminding him how to be a man, how to behave, and how to strengthen his virtue. In 1987, when he realized that the village needed guidance, Bi Lingda's father instructed them to rebuild the pavilion before he died. Through Bi Lingda's efforts, a new bean-tossing pavilion was built in the lotus pond of the village in 2008. Although there are no bottles to put beans in, with the words bean-tossing pavilion, the villagers will remember their ancestors' instructions to live life with virtue while working to pass it on to future generations.
In the Bee family ancestral hall, the instructions are hung prominently as a visible reminder to their descendants. Today, eight generations of bees live in Wanja village. The character Chang represents the eldest male generation followed by Xian, De, Yu, Su, Yan, and Tsing, which mean following the ancestors' instructions by living with virtue and raising their own children to embrace them too. Characters Ji, Bai, Jia, Di follow, which refer to the B family rules of holding a noble moral character, strengthening virtue, and raising people right. Yeah, 未来会绽放耀眼光芒 